Hansel and Gretel Far away, deep in a great forest, lived a poor woodcutter with his two children and their wicked stepmother. The boy was called Hansel, and the girl was called Gretel. The poor woodcutter had very little food, and once, when a great famine fell on the land and there was almost nothing to eat, he could no longer procure even enough bread for his family. He often thought about this in his bed, and tossed about in his worry and anxiety, and one night he groaned and said to his wife, What is to become of us? How are we to feed our poor children when we no longer have anything even for ourselves? I'll tell you what, husband, answered the woman. Early tomorrow morning we will take the children out far, far into the forest to where it is the thickest. There we will light a fire for them and give each of them one more piece of bread, and then we will go to our work and leave them alone. They will not find the way home again, and we shall be rid of them. No, wife, said the man, I will not do that. How can I bear to leave my children alone in the forest? Oh, you fool, said she, then we must all four die of hunger, and you may as well nail down the planks for our coffins. So she left him no peace until he consented and agreed. But I feel very sorry for the poor children all the same, said the man. The two children had also not been able to sleep for hunger, and had heard what their wicked stepmother had said to their father. Gretel wept sad, bitter tears, and said to Hansel, Now all is over with us. Be quiet, Gretel, said Hansel. Do not worry yourself or be distressed. I will soon find a way to help us. And when the old folks had fallen asleep, he got up, put on his little coat, opened the door below, and crept outside. The moon shone brightly, and the white pebbles which lay in front of the house glittered like real silver coins. Hansel stooped and stuffed the little pocket of his coat with as many as he could get in. Then he went back and said to Gretel, Be comforted, dear little sister, and sleep in peace. God will not forsake us, or let any harm come to us. Then he lay down again in his bed. When day dawned, but before the sun had risen, the woman came and awoke the two children, saying, Get up, you lazy sleepy heads. We are going into the forest to get firewood. She gave each a little piece of bread and said, There is something for your dinner but do not eat it up before then, for you will get nothing else. Gretel folded both pieces of bread under her apron, because Hansel had the pebbles in his pocket. Then they all set out together on the way to the forest. When they had walked a short time, Hansel stood still and peeped back at the house, and did so again and again. His father said, Hansel? What are you looking at there and staying behind for? Pay attention, and do not forget how to use your legs. Ah, father, said Hansel, I am looking at my little white cat, which is sitting up on the roof, and wants to say goodbye to me. The wicked stepmother said, Fool, that is not your little cat. That is the morning sun, which is shining on the chimneys. Hansel, however, had not been looking back at the cat but had been constantly throwing one of the white pebble stones out of his pocket on the path. When they had reached the middle of the forest, the father said, Now, children, pile up some wood, and I will light a fire so you won't be cold. Hansel and Gretel gathered brushwood together, as high as a little hill. The brushwood was lighted, and when the flames were burning very high, the wicked stepmother said, Now, children, lay yourselves down by the fire and rest. We will go into the forest and cut some wood. When we have done, we will come back and fetch you away and bring you home. Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire, and when noon came, each ate a little piece of bread. 
and as they heard the strokes of the wood axe chopping, they believed that their father was near. It was not the axe, however, but a branch which he had fashioned to a withered tree which the wind was blowing backwards and forwards. And as they had been sitting such a long time, their eyes closed with fatigue and tiredness, and they fell fast asleep. When at last they awoke, it was already dark night. Gretel began to cry and said, How are we to get out of the forest now? But Hansel comforted her and said, Just wait a little until the bright moon has risen high in the night sky, and then we will soon find the way. And when the full moon had risen high, Hansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles which shone brightly like new coins and showed them the way. They walked the whole night long, and by break of day, when the sun began to shine, they came once more to their father's house. They knocked at the door, and when the wicked stepmother opened it and saw that it was Hansel and Gretel, she said, You naughty children! Why have you slept so long in the forest? We thought you were never coming back at all. The father, however, rejoiced and was happy, for it had cut him to the heart and made him feel very sad to leave them behind alone. Not long afterwards, there was once more a great famine and very little food throughout the land, and the children heard their wicked stepmothers saying at night to their father, Everything is eaten again. We have one half loaf of bread left, and that is the end. The children must go. We will take them farther into the wood, so that they will not find their way out again. There is no other means of saving ourselves. The man's heart was heavy and very sad, and he said, It would be better for you to share the last mouthful with your children. The woman, however, would listen to nothing that he had to say, but scolded and reproached him. He who has once agreed a first time must then agree a second time likewise, and as he had yielded to his wife and done what she said the first time, he had to do so a second time also. The children, however, were still awake and had heard the conversation. When the old folks were asleep, Hansel again got up and wanted to go out and pick up pebbles as he had done before, but the wicked stepmother had locked the door, and Hansel could not get out. Nevertheless, he comforted his little sister and said, Do not cry, Gretel. Go to sleep quietly. The good God in heaven will help us. Early in the morning came the wicked stepmother and took the children out of their beds. Their piece of bread was given to them, but it was even smaller than the time before. On the way into the forest, Hansel crumbled his in his pocket, and often stood still and threw a morsel on the ground. Hansel, why do you stop and look around? said the father. Come on. I'm looking back at my little pigeon, which is sitting on the roof and wants to say good-bye to me, answered Hansel. Fool, said the wicked stepmother, that is not your little pigeon. That is the morning sun that is shining on the chimney. Hansel, however, little by little, threw all the crumbs on the path. The wicked stepmother led the children still deeper into the forest, where they had never in their lives been before. Then a great fire was again made, and the wicked stepmother said, Just sit here, you children, and when you are tired you may sleep a little. We are going into the forest to cut wood, and in the evening, when we are done, we will come and fetch you away and bring you home. When it was noon, Gretel shared her piece of bread with Hansel, who had scattered his by the way. Then they fell asleep, and evening passed, but no one came to the poor children. They did not awake until it was dark night, and Hansel comforted his little sister and said, 
Just wait, Gretel, until the bright moon rises high, and then we shall see the crumbs of bread which I have scattered and strewn about. They will show us our way home again. When the moon came, they set out, but they found no crumbs. For the many thousands of birds which fly about in the woods and fields had picked them all up. Hansel said to Gretel, We shall soon find the way. But they did not find it. They walked the whole night, and all the next day, too, from morning till evening. But they did not get out of the forest, and were very hungry for they had nothing to eat but two or three berries which grew on the ground. And as they were so weary and tired that their legs could carry them no longer, they lay down beneath a tree and fell asleep. It was now three mornings since they had left their father's house. They began to walk again, but they always came deeper into the forest, and if help did not come soon, they must die of hunger and weariness. When it was midday, they saw a beautiful snow-white bird sitting on a tree bough, which sang so delightfully that they stood still and listened to it. And when its song was over, it spread its wings and flew away before them, and they followed it until they reached a little house, on the roof of which the bird alighted and perched. And when they approached closer to the little house, they saw that it was built of gingerbread and covered with cupcakes, but that the windows were made of clear sugar with peppermint sticks for posts and gumdrops and candies for decoration. We will set to work on that, said Hansel, and have a good meal. I will eat a bit of the roof, and you, Gretel, can eat some of the window. It will taste sweet. Hansel reached up above and broke off a little of the roof to try how it tasted, and Gretel leaned against the window and nibbled at the panes. Then a soft voice called from the parlor room inside the house. Nibble, nibble, munch and chew, who is nibbling at my roof? The children answered, Only the wind, the wind does blow, don't mind the wind, though. And they went on eating without disturbing themselves. Hansel, who liked the taste of the roof, tore down a great big piece of it, and Gretel pushed out the whole of one round window pane, sat down, and enjoyed it. Suddenly the door opened and a woman as old as the hills who supported herself on crutches came creeping out. Hansel and Gretel were so terribly frightened that they let fall what they had in their hands. The old woman, however, nodded her head and said, Oh, you dear children, who has brought you here? Do come in and stay with me. No harm shall happen to you. She took them both by the hand and led them into her little house. Then good food was set before them, milk and pancakes with candy, apples, and nuts. And afterwards, two pretty little beds were covered with clean white linen, and Hansel and Gretel lay down in them and thought they were in heaven. The old woman had only pretended to be so kind. She was in reality a wicked witch who lay in wait for children and had only built the little house of gingerbread in order to entice and trick them there. When a child fell into her power, she captured it, cooked, and ate it, and that was a feast day with her. Witches have red eyes and cannot see far but they have powerful noses that smell like dogs and are aware when human beings come near. When Hansel and Gretel came into her neighborhood, she laughed with malice and evil, 
and said mockingly, I have them. They shall not escape me. Early in the morning, before the children were awake, she was already up. And when she saw both of them sleeping and looking so pretty, with their plump and rosy cheeks, she muttered to herself, That will be a dainty mouthful. Then she grabbed Hansel with her shriveled, wrinkly hand, carried him into a little stable where she kept her goats, and locked him in behind a door grated with iron bars. Scream as he might, it would not help him. Then she went to Gretel, shook her till she awoke, and screamed, Get up, lazy thing! Fetch me some water, and cook something good for your brother! He is in the stable outside, and I'm going to feed him until he's fat, and when he is fat, I will eat him. Gretel began to weep and cry bitterly, but it was all in vain and useless, for she was forced to do what the wicked witch commanded and ordered her to do. And now the very best food was cooked for poor Hansel, but Gretel got nothing but old banana peels and peanut shells. Every morning the witch crept to the little stable and called, Hansel, stretch out your finger so I can feel if you will soon be fat. Hansel, however, stretched out a little chicken bone to her, and the old witch, who had dim, weak eyes, could not see it and thought it was Hansel's finger, and was astonished and surprised that there was no way of fattening him up. When four weeks had gone by, and Hansel still remained thin and skinny, she was full of impatience and would not wait any longer. Now then, Gretel, the witch called out to the girl, get busy and bring some water. Let Hansel be fat or lean. I don't care. Tomorrow I will catch him and cook him. Oh, how the poor little sister did lament and cry when she had to fetch the water, and how her tears did flow like water down her cheeks. Dear God, do help us, she cried. Just keep your noise to yourself, said the old witch. It won't help you at all. Early in the morning, Gretel had to go out and hang up the cauldron cooking pot with the water and light the fire. We will bake bread first, said the old woman. I have already heated the oven and fixed the bread dough to heat it up and bake it hot. She pushed poor Gretel out close to the oven from which flames of fire were already darting up high. Crawl in, said the witch and see if it is hot enough, so that we can put the bread dough in. And once Gretel was inside, the witch planned to shut the oven and let Gretel bake in it, and then the witch would eat her too. But Gretel was smart and clever, and saw what the witch had in mind, so Gretel said, I do not know how I am to do it. How do I get in? You silly goose, said the old witch woman, the door is big enough. Just look, I can get in myself. And the witch climbed up and poked her own head into the oven. Then quickly Gretel gave her a push that shoved the witch far inside the oven and shut the iron door and locked the bolt tight. Oh, then that witch began to howl quite horribly. But Gretel ran away, and the terrible evil witch was stuck in the oven and couldn't ever get out again. Gretel ran like lightning to Hansel, opened his little stable door, and called out, Hansel, we are saved. The old witch is dead. And Hansel sprang like a bird from its cage when the door is opened. How they did rejoice and be happy and embrace each other and dance about and kiss each other. And since they no longer had any need to be afraid of her, they went into the witch's house and in every corner there stood chests full of pearls and jewels and gold. These are far better than pebbles, said Hansel, and thrust into his pockets whatever could be got in. And Gretel said, I too will take something home with me, 
and filled her apron full. But now we must hurry away, said Hansel, so that we may get out of the witch's forest. When they had walked for two hours, they came to a great big lake of water. We cannot cross over, said Hansel. I don't see a foot plank or a bridge to walk on. And there is no ferry boat, answered Gretel. But a white duck is swimming over there. If I ask her, she will help us over. Then Gretel called out, Little duck, little duck, do you see? We need your help, Hansel and me. There's not a boat or a bridge in sight. Take us across on your back so white. The duck swam over to them, and Hansel seated himself on its back and told his sister to sit beside him. No, replied Gretel, that will be too heavy for the little duck. She shall take you across first, and then me, one after the other. The good little duck did so, and when they were safely across and had walked for a short time, the forest seemed to be more and more familiar to them, and after a while they saw from far away their father's house. Then they began to run, rushed into the front room, and hugged their father's neck. The poor man had been so sad and terribly unhappy from the first hour he had left the children in the forest. The wicked stepmother, however, was dead. Gretel emptied her apron until pearls and precious stones and jewels spilled about the room, and Hansel threw one handful of gold coins after another out of his pocket to add to them. Then all anxiety and worry and trouble was at an end, and the little family lived together in perfect happiness forever after. Thanks for listening. listening.